friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing my August and September wrap up. Let's just kind of get into it. So I think if my math serves me correctly, I read a total of 13 books between August and September. I read three books in August and I almost wanted to make it to 11 in September, but then I was at to film this video and I had to stop it short. So I read a total of 10 books in, August, in September. I think August was a little bit of a slower month. I had like maybe one or two five stars and then I had a lot of good reads in September that I'm really enjoying and really excited to share with you guys. So I'll start in chronological order, more or less, and let's dive into the books that I read these past two months. So one of the books I read I did a full length review for and that is Damned If You Do by Alex Brown. This is a YA horror comedy novel, perfect for the spooky time, following a young girl named Cordelia or Cordy who is just trying to really just live trying to just like pick herself back up after her father mysteriously left town one year that is until she finds out during the week of her like her city's like founding that the only reason her father left was because she accidentally summoned a demon and dragged her father to hell now several years later it's time for this demon to collect on her deal and she is stuck now trying to trap a stronger demon into something else. <laughs> I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book and I won't go too much into detail because I do have a full length review for this book but it is a very strong debut and I loved the aspects of Filipino um of the Filipino myths that were in interested that were thrown in there the theater kid aspect of it all. I had a lot of friends in high school who were theater, theater kids. I was more of a band kid in the sidelines and just the awkward angsty romance aspect that was added in there. Highly recommend the book. Again, review, full length review is down below for you guys to take a gander at. The next book that I read is part of my, um, five, the next two books actually is part of my five star predictions vlog. So if you guys are looking into that or want to know like my thoughts as I'm reading the book, I will leave that link down below for you guys as well as any other vlogs or reviews that any of these books have been a part of. But that first one is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a young adult, almost like, I guess, mystery novel following young Claudia as she returns to um, her town for the school year and finds that her best friend Monday has gone missing. She is now on a hunt on the search to find out exactly what happened to her best friend and feels like she is the only one searching for her friend and she, while she's trying to piece things together, things are both coming together and also unraveling at the same time. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. The plot twist at the end I did not see coming for the life of me. I when it clicked, I was like, it, it didn't even click for me. When the words were written on the page that I read, I was like, you know, this makes sense. And now I now take back every single criticism I had about this book. I absolutely adored this book. I was crying. I was really rooting for Claudia to find Monday. I was wishing and hoping and praying for the happiest ending possible, even though deep down in your gut, you know the outcome you know the headlines you know the heartbreaking stories and you know everything about it this story touches on so many things um lots of trigger warnings with this one such as child abuse death um gentrif i guess like mental instability gentrification death of it, it, it sexual harassment it was just like a lot to read but i had like it was such an immersive read the way that tiffany d jackson writes books i could not put this book down i just desperately wanted to know what happened to monday i wanted claudia to live the happiest ending that you could get from this book and the last line gets me every single time and i just like it is one of my new favorite books, honestly. It was so beautifully written and done with so much care and love for the topic. I'm not saying that Tiffany D. Jackson does not handle things with a lot of care and love. That's not what I'm saying. But you know, like considering the topic of this novel, it was done with so much love and care that I just, I fell in love and I just wanted so much more for Claudia and Monday. Um, yeah. I will leave that link down, that vlog link down below for you guys, so you guys can like see my full thoughts and see exactly when I started backtracking and sh shoving the the words that had left my mouth back into my mouth. The next book that I read for that vlog is one that I'm like not sure what to think about anymore. So, if you have watched my vlog, that is *The Sun in the Void* by Gabriela Romero La Cruz. 
I initially gave this five out of five stars. I had so much fun reading it. I thought the world was super immersive and I really just like fell in love with the characters. I thought that the characters had their own, were very, I thought the characters were very much fleshed out characters. They had their own values. They had their own motives. They had their own reasons for doing things and just their own goals. And I really like that because in essence, the characters in of itself, none of them were necessarily like purely good or purely evil. They were very flawed. They were very led by their own desires and very selfish at times. And I really just enjoyed seeing those characters. However, once I started looking at my own reviews and my own, or looking at reviews and seeing things pop up kind of on the internet, I realized I wasn't really reading with, well, one, the experiences that I realized that were not my own and the biggest criticisms I've seen were things I didn't notice because again, I am not part of that community. A lot of people had, which I didn't really catch surprisingly, a lot of people had rightfully so criticized the usage of like using savages, I think monsters as a term for the indigenous community within this novel. It was very much looked down upon and the two main characters had their own very like internal issues with their own um their own th their own things that were never their own species i guess or race that was never really discussed inside within the pa the confines of the pages there was also i that i did not realize that a lot of the people in the heart transplant community were starting to feel a type of way rightfully so with how the author described the scars that the main character received it's not much of a spoiler because it happens like right in the first two chapters of the book she re she ends up receiving the equivalent of a heart transplant in this world and they use the dark magic to give her that heart and the descriptions of her becoming monstrous of her having these ugly descriptive things was rightfully so very hurtful so i along with other things like, I enjoyed this book, yes, and did I think the ending was like, this is literally just the cartoon villain telling me every single thing that was that the reasons for all the things they're doing? Yes. But the reason why I'm so hesitant to give it the rating that I initially gave it in this wrap-up is because of the things that have hurt other communities. And I don't know, I just, you know, like, un I guess until the author does come out with a statement on the matter on like maybe why she did it this way or what or like maybe explain that these things will be explored in the future novels I am just gonna like put my actual rating of this book on the back burner um, again my vlog is out for you guys to see so you guys can see actually my full thoughts as I am like reading this novel and like quite thoroughly enjoying it but like looking back at it now and seeing some critical thinking and some thoughts from other people who have been hurt by this, I can't, like as a reviewer and as a person who wants to recommend books that will make people feel in like ways that they want to feel, you know, and like make them feel represented in a way, having a book about indigenous people be directed to as monsters and even see themselves as monsters, as well as having someone who had a very life-changing um, operation that saved her life view everything about it as disgusting and ugly I which is something the actual heart patient heart transplant patients do actually struggle with I just can't bring myself to do it so like yeah so take with that with what you will um <laughs> that's all I can really give you because again not very sure with what to do with this situation because I am like torn but then I also know better. So the vlog is down there for you guys to peruse if you guys want to see like my full thoughts. Um, if that'll sway you one way or the other, if this review will sway you one way or the other, it's really just up to you. <laughs> Moving on to my September TBR wrap up, which is a doozy because I read a lot of different books in a lot of different times. So the first one that I'll start with is a non-fiction book and that is Don't Text Your Ex Happy Birthday by Nick Vile. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. If you guys don't know, Nick Vile is like a TV personality. He's a podcaster and a social media influencer. One of the few white men that I trust with a microphone, if I'm being honest. I have been following his podcast for a bit since I was introduced into the Bachelor and Bachelorette series. But this is basically like, as it sounds, a, a dating advice situation where he talks about his own personal experiences, the dating world today, and what you, how to navigate it more so from his perspective. 
And you're probably thinking, Teresa, you're in a loving relationship. Why are you listening to a white man about relationships? Again, I have been listening to this man for three years in his podcast. At first, I was very hesitant because I was like, why would I listen to dating advice? But he, as my sister said, because I had her read this book before I did, he just sounds like a very, like, Bit, he's very big brother in the way that he speaks and the way that he gives out advice He's very much the person that's like I can give you the advice and the solution that I want to see for you But if you are not in this position to be ready for that I'm just gonna give you the advice that will help you come to a decision on your own and maybe figure something out by yourself and what you, and the advice that you want to hear again, it's very big brother. It's very much I care for you as a person and I want you to make decisions, but I also understand that sometimes we're not ready to make those hard decisions yet. So I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I really did enjoy it. I will be recommending it for you guys if you guys are like maybe starting to date, if you guys are maybe in a relationship and you're just like feeling weird about it. If you had just ended a relationship, he talks in detail about his own personal experiences having dated as a person um, before he met his now wonderfully, I think, wife highly recommend the book it's such a good read um i think he, the only thing that i had an issue with is that there were definitely some parts that like so if you guys have listened to his podcast nick is a rambler it's no surprise it's a little bit the rambling does carry into his own novel that he wrote himself so it that's the only thing that can't kind of dinged me was that i was like i got the point a couple paragraphs ago i don't need another anecdote but again probably something a big brother would actually do. I don't know, I'm the eldest of the family, so I can't confirm nor deny if big brothers ramble. The next book is actually a TikTok favorite and I do also have a full length, this one's spoiler filled review of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This is an adult high fantasy romance novel, or a romanticy as people like to call it these days, following young Violet as she is forced to join the writer's quadrant and become a dragon writer in this military academy. This academy basically is like a free-for-all once you get past those gates. The only place you are safe from being killed or dying is the bed that you sleep on at night. And you have to be in bed at night to be safe from it. I don't know what else to tell you guys. It's all over the place. I gave this actually surprisingly a 4 out of 5 stars. I'm not going to talk too much in depth about it because I, you know, there's a full-on review of what I enjoyed and what I didn't. Characters were good. Biggest issue was just the world building, which I get in depth with. Um, and... The scene where the dragons are getting laid, probably the the moment that I was like, I can't give this book a five. I can't in good faith give this book a five. This was horrific to read. I will leave that review link down below for you guys so you guys can go ahead and see what you would like. Um, if you would like to read this book or not, it's all in there. Then I'm gonna talk about the next three books and that is because I did them in a 24 hour readathon. But th those books are the Princess Diaries books. I read Princess Diaries, Princess. And this follows young Mia as she finds out that she is not just a girl from New York just trying to live her best life. She is actually a princess and because due to her father's testicular cancer, she he can't have more kids, which means she is the only heir to the throne. So she at a lovely ripe age of 14 now has to now grapple with the fact that she is going through puberty. She is flat-chested, which she mentions a lot in these books. Too much. And she has crushes on people all while trying to go through princess training and keeping it a secret. I'm not going to go too in-depth with all of my thoughts on each book. I will just instead leave the link to my vlog for that link down below for you guys so you guys can see all of the books that I have had, all the thoughts that I had between the books. Um, I do think I will be continuing on with the series. I have heard that the rest of the books do get slightly better because in the original three that I read, Mia is like a really baby leftist and like as baby of a leftist as you can get in the early like 2000s, I think because those books came out. Like her mom cried when she dated a Republican, which I deeply understand in my soul. I think I will be continuing on with the series. I want to see where it goes. I want to see the parts of it that everyone seems to really love and i believe that the books as they go on as they follow mia and age change in the age categories of the books as well so we'll see how it goes i know the latest book came out was about her trying to rule a country while there's a freaking pandemic going on so i might stop before then because i don't know how to feel about reading about current times right now still still not there still not there in my healing journey with regarding the situation it's not gonna happen <laughs> The next book is an ARC that I received that is out now. 
and that is Always Isn't Forever by J.C. Cervantes or J.C. Cervantes. This is a YA magical realism. It's following Young Heart and Young Ruby. They have been friends since childhood. They are high school sweethearts and they think they are going to go the distance. They're planning on their life together, planning on buying a sailboat, they're planning on going to college together. That is until one day Heart ends up in an accident and passes away. Stricken with grief and drowning in it, Ruby doesn't really know what is up or what is down. That is until Hart realizes he has a second chance, but this second chance comes with a stipulation. He cannot tell anyone about it. I ended up giving this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It gave me very much vibes along you have reached Sam, only it gave me more of the world building that I wanted from that book. It's just so heartbreaking. It's so wonderfully written about grief and loss and how that affects us but then also at the concept of second chances and how love is just so strong that it transcends the rea the concepts of reality it is like a favorite of the year i think fondly back at this book and i cry like to see ruby and heart love each other so much that it like fights the rules that the angels that they made it's so good i highly recommend this book um it is going to be a favorite of the year and if you guys haven't picked it up, I highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of um, You've Reached Sam. I think this book will definitely pull out your heartstrings and you can see the similarities. The next book is a part of a series, another arc that is out now, and that is House of Marion by J.L. This is a YA high fantasy, like urban fantasy novel following a young girl whose name I still do not know. Young, young Kel, but like it's spelled like Quell because it's short for Raquel. And the entire book up until someone says her full name i was pronouncing it like quell like you know to quell a storm or like a, si a situation this follows young kel as she is on the run with her mother her mother ha she has a deep secret of because her deep secret because her magic is disliked and considered dangerous in this world that is until she and her mother are separated and desperate and not knowing what to do she turns to her grandmother whom she has not spoken to in now stuck in a very st scary world she has to navigate and try to find something to keep her safe until she and her mother can reunite i ended up giving this book a three and a half stars i had really high hopes for this book i like especially with the sh like the mortal instruments like beginning where she watches people get murdered and she like runs away and people are like i can see you and she's like you can see me i can see you but i just think the pacing was a little off it was like very much high school where she's like going to classes which isn't bad i like a good dark academic situation however the problem therein lies is that it was all that it was just her trying to fit in and trying to hide these things and the actual mystery and the separate twist didn't come until much later and by then, I was starting to lose interest, and when the twist came, I was like, okay, this should have been introduced and hinted at a lot earlier. I felt like there was nothing really much to write home about, if I'm being honest. I was like super invested in the beginning. I thought the world building was interesting and the concept of the powers, but then as I got more, I kind of started to lose a grasp on the plot on the characters and the own and, and the characters and like who they were just because it was just so confusing to me i didn't see the romance very much it was just kind of like weird and it came out of nowhere but it didn't come out of nowhere at the same time don't think i'll be continuing on with the series i think if you are a fan of like the dark academic fantasy magic situation You'll probably enjoy this one but to me it just was not much to write home about and by the time i finished the book i was like well i don't know what to do with this information that i had been given and the lighting changed again because it's getting brighter therese and her constant struggle of lighting because it's fall and here it's starting to rain and get cloudy for no reason the next book is another arc following me here i got a few arcs and that is suddenly a murder by lauren munoz um, this is a YA, I guess, murder mystery following a group of teens in uh, like a 1920s mansion. It's in modern world, but it's like they're graduating, so they throw a 1920s theme party where they'll be stuck there for the entire week with no with no contact to the outside world, or it's just them, just all of them, horny, angry teenagers graduating, stuck in a 1920s themed place where they can't really go anywhere, and suddenly one of them ends up dead now forced to really try and figure out what's going on they are now 
stuck not only in their grief, but being interrogated by these detectives until they figure out what the heck's going on. I give this a three out of five stars. I had really high hopes for this book, I'm not gonna lie, you guys. I thought it was gonna be fun. It's 1920s themed, it's a murder mystery. It's very like, like it gives me Knives Out and like Agatha Christie vibes or I've never read Agatha Christie so I can only assume, but I was really stoked for this one. My biggest issue for this was that the biggest plot twist in this book, like there are two big plot twists. One was like you saw, like you, you had a feeling. You were like, okay, that's, that's fine. The second one was like, where was this hinted at? Where did this come from? I don't, it was never hinted at throughout the book and then all of a sudden it was the reason for everything. So I was really just like, well, this feels out of left field and maybe with a bit more editing because like, you know, murder mysteries, great and all, I love them. To be a good one, you have to litter everything through. And I feel like with the big, the big reason for the murder was not very well trickled through. So I was like, what am I missing here? I don't understand. It, it made you think that it was one way the entire time, but then it flipped. But then the the reason for the flip wasn't well hinted at, so it was just weird. And then not much of a spoiler, I guess. We watched the majority of this is through interviews, and it's not like Daisy Jones' interview. It's like he said, she said, I watched from a literal post in a closet for most of these interviews. So it, I lost interest very quickly because it was everything was just being told to us. Nothing was necessarily being explained. The character wasn't doing any digging. And then all of a sudden she remembers what happened and she finds it out. And then it's like, you're sitting here trying to piece together something that makes no sense whatsoever. So it was a three out of five. Premise was interesting. Characters were compelling, but like, like compelling enough for me to want to keep reading clearly, but not enough to the point where I was like, well, this was a wonderfully well done mystery. Oh my God. Forever will be thinking, not really, no, I'll never be thinking about this book again. Well, maybe I'll think about it. I'll think about it, but it's not like, it's again, like, same thing with House of Marion. Nothing really to write home about. I think if you're starting in Murder Mysteries, you might enjoy this one. But if you are, like, you, you, you've you seen enough Murder Mysteries, you've watched Knives Out, you've seen Pretty Little Liars, all of those, like, more focused mysteries you might lose interest with this one the next book that i'm going to talk about is going to be a new favorite and a new personality of mine and i'm so happy and that is the fiance farce by alexandria Belfler. this is an adult romance novel sapphic romance novel following Gemma and tansy tansy is tired of being the the child who has no boyfriend it gets bugged every time to get a boyfriend so she makes up a lie that she is dating the ever elusive and amazing Gemma West who is a model. That is until Gemma herself shows up at her cousin's wedding that Tansy is attending. Gemma with her own reasons strikes up a conversation with Tansy and is like so we're dating I guess and she and Tansy's like panicking apologizing and Gemma's like no I can use this to my advantage we're actually now engaged and everything is wonderful from here. It was such Gemma as a character had me blushing from page one. If you guys have followed or on my Instagram and you saw me share some snippets of the book I was reading, one of those snippets was Gemma talking about how she would like, if she agreed, she will spend the rest of her life on her knees worshiping Tansy and they had just met. Gemma was such a beautiful character and I love seeing like a bad girl character who just wants to do right by her family and herself and things that she's trying to do. And Tansy is just like this, like you would think that she's like very like quiet. She's this bookish girl who never really got along with her step family, but she wants to keep her father's bookstore and just like ride that wave. She's very homely, but she has like a fire to her that I just adored. And the plot of the fake engagement until it turns real engagement and then everything falls apart and the big romantic gesture after the third act breakup it was amazing and i was so happy that i found this book while perusing my library and stuck out another 21 week hold for this book it just i was so happy it's just such a good book and it was like the pacing was so well done the characters are beautiful to read about 
the writing was like on a different level. I just, I'm gonna go to Barnes & Noble this weekend and pick up a copy of this book and it'll forever grace my shelves and I'm so excited that it's just gonna be part of my collection and I get to reread and annotate Tansy and Gemma's love story all over again. That was a really good read. <laughs> Like I sat there and was like, oh, can I end the month on this high note? But no, I had other books to read. But it was just such a good read. Like you have, it was just so good. And I just, so good. The next and final book of this, of this wrap up is actually one that wraps up my reading all of T Taylor Jenkins Reads as um, backlisted works. Now, the only thing I haven't read of Taylor Jenkins Reed is Carrie Soto, which I don't know if I will, just because Malibu Rising was kind of, like, disappointing. But that is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reed. This is an adult, I guess, a like contemporary fiction. I wouldn't call it romance I have in the past with her books, just because I don't think she really writes romance books. This follows sort of two couples. First, Emma and Jesse. Emma and Jesse our high school sweethearts. They get married, they travel the world, they do everything to their heart's desire. They get married and just shy of their year anniversary, Jesse is called on the journalist job to travel to Alaska, where unfortunately his helicopter transporting him to the location goes down and people are found dead. They never find Jesse's body, so he presumably is dead alongside the other people. Emma, rightfully so, is grief stricken. This man has been in her life for almost like probably a good decade. And she moves back to her family hometown, desperate for something to comfort her, to be near people that she loves and adores and who love and adore her back. Now, enter Sam. Sam is also part of Emma's high school life. They used to work together at a family store and they fall in love and get engaged. Now at their engagement, kind of not the, like dinner, but like, you know, celebrating their engagement with their close family, she gets a call saying Jesse is alive and he's on the way to see her again. Now torn, Emma now has a husband and a fiance and is unsure really where she lands in this. I finished this today and I cried. <laughs> this is a four to five stars for me. Again, Taylor Jenkins reads his backlisted works are probably my favorite of hers just because in the, I think, in the newer works, her characters are such a strong point, and in the backlisted, her themes and her characters are such a strong point of this book. Again, 4.5 out of 5, 5 stars. I loved seeing um, Emma learn who she is and who she was as she traversed these two relationships. I loved seeing the two boys and how like perfect they were, how well they fit in Emma's lives, and how just wonderful they are. Sam was by far the boy that I loved the most. I just, I love a man who can make a good grilled cheese, you guys. I'm having grilled cheese tonight too, so. But the biggest thing for me with this book was that I felt, well, I talked about this with my own friend Sam, who actually was the one who gifted me this book. But I talked about this with her, and we both agreed that in this one, it is her newer, it is like her older novels, her fresher novels, like when she's still like a, a young author. They felt like there was a lot of instances where we were being told what to do or what was going on and how to feel rather than being shown. And I feel like the decision in the book was not as like touch and go as I expected it to be. I expected Emma to just be so like torn. I expected like a type of a love triangle that could have rivaled um, Will, Gemma, and uh, Will, Tess, and Jim. I that's that's what I expected but I felt like from the get-go you knew who she was gonna choose just because of how it was already set up you know so that was my biggest things but I did really love this book again her backlisted works are some of my favorite of hers to have read I will never not rave about her backlisted works and I wish she'd go back to just like the contemporary fiction of it all because I think paired that with her more mature and practice writing it would be unstoppable. Unstoppable. But that is it for my August and September wrap up. Lots of books read. I'm hoping I'll continue the trend in October, November, and December because I am like 24 books behind my Goodreads goal because I hit a really bad slump for three months. But we're not going to talk about that right now. But yes, if you guys have read any of these books or if I had inspired you to read any of these books, let me know in the comments below so we can chat about them. Um, all of my social medias are linked down below for you guys if you guys want to check out what I'm reading, um, what I'm posting, what I'm talking about. But until next time, 
I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and hope you guys have a good weekend when this video drops. Yes. And I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you.